Welcome everyone to our artistic group webinar. This is moderated by Dale White, hosted by Dale White, USTA's WBTF Judges Chair. I'm Monica Lee. I am USTA's uh, technology and media specialist. And so I will be assisting with um, the presentation today. Um, just to get started, uh, I wanted to present our agenda. We already began with introduction. And uh, I wanted to explain how you will be able to ask questions and engage with us. Um, after, that, after that, we will review artistic group captions. Um, look over the group evaluation sheet. Uh, look over the artistic group's concept summary chart. Review a few of the performance examples, aka role models. And then Dale will go over some of the artistic group key takeaways. So one of the things that will be important for you to know is how to interact with us. And you will do that by using the chat box function of this WebEx. Um, you can click on the icon that looks like the little blue circle, the little speech bubble, um, and then you can use the chat box in order to ask us any questions. Um, we will be monitoring the chat box. We may not get to your question right away. However, we will do our best to get to everybody's questions um, in the order in which they are asked. So I just want to give everyone an opportunity to launch their chat box now and see if anybody has any issues with that. So go ahead and find that chat icon, click on it, or if your chat box is already open, look for it. And if you'd like to send a message, you can do so. Okay, so we've got a message from Amanda. She says, hi all. Okay. And I think, Dale, we're ready to go. Okay, very good. Thank you, Monica, for that introduction. Welcome, everyone. This is, like Monica said, this is a artistic group webinar. And I think that, uh, you know, I'm going to start with just the definition and the mission statement, first of all, of artistic group. You know, it's a very exciting event that we have here that's been uh, formulated by the WBTF because it has a great amount of potential for all twirlers of all levels, all coaches of all levels, and a, an event that is proving already to be very, very exciting. So I do want to go through just the definition of the mission statement. The group event is an ensemble of baton twirling athletes that prioritizes effect and entertainment as the cornerstone of the event. The group achieves this through the use of effective characterization, interesting staging, creativity, artistic detailing, and a keen sense of musical interpretation all interface to create an entertaining production value. It's, you know, I'm, I'm, I, would, I would not go as far as to say that it's not basically baton base, but the main thing about the artistic group event is that we now have to sort of change our mindset as to what the effects are created by these twirlers on the floor. And as we will see here in a minute in the uh, group evaluation form, you're going to see that 70% of the production of the event, 70% relies on the coach and the designer and choreographer. The 30% relies on the kids. This is in direct contrast to almost every event that we do. The other thing I want to I read 
uh, emphasize about this is that this event is absolutely not a derivative of the team event. This event stands alone. This event has its own identity and its own set of parameters. I think that it's we're growing with this event. We're we're learning how to adapt to this event, and we're learning how not to use the baton in the same way that we have used it in the team event and all the other events as well. So before we start, I just want to give you an overview on how this group event is actually divided and how it's evaluated. So we're going to look at the group evaluation form first, and you can see that uh, it's listed from top to bottom, and we have the first thing is general effect. General effect is 40 points. The, des the, design and the design and composition, the choreography, is 30, and the baton is 15, and the body is 15. So you can see that 40 and 30, that 70% that's rely, that relies on the coach and the designers and the choreographers to actually come through and design a show that the kids can actually do. And the kids have to then perform that, obviously, on, on the floor. But their big responsibility is placed on the coach. Um, it's, it's, true, it's creativity it's creativity and musicality in a way that we've not known before based off of the other events in, um, in USTA that, that we have done. So having said that, when we say some of these words that may be reflective of other events, do keep in mind that your mindset has to change in, in terms of what general effect is, what the use of the baton is, how body is used, how, how events and effects and uh, moments are created through design that is unlike anything that we've ever done before. This is not about virtuosity. It's not about big tricks. It's not, not about what uh, I always like to say, uh, this is not a, a look what I can do contest. This is all about the design and it's all about uh, formulating an architectural program on the floor that is relatively uh, simple for the athletes to conform to, but it's a little bit difficult for the coaches to actually create. So anyway, that's, um, that gives you a little bit of a, of a kind of a preamble, you know, to the event itself. Now let's just delve into, let's delve into the, uh, the actual um, the actual captions themselves. So we need to spend a little bit of time on that. Uh, we're going to first talk about the artistic group. Please do the concept summaries. We're going to talk about the ton first. Why? Because, um, I, and I know that this is going to be a shock, a shocking and uh, something, you know, a little bit earth shaking for you. But the baton, the actual baton and its twirling is the least important thing in this event. <gasps> okay, don't pass out. Uh, but it's true. It's true. The baton is simply, basically, is used as a prop or an enhancement to the design, and it's used to create an effect. Now, unlike any other event, it's, there's no requirements in this, in this event with the baton. They do not have to do a role. They don't have to do any contact material. They don't have to do any exchanges. They don't have to do um, any of that. Now, they will, but there's no prescribed or requirement for any of the modes of twirling to be used in this event. Uh, this event, the use of the baton, is the complementary element of effect that layers on top of the body that that body and baton layers on top of the design to create a visual effect that's musical, characterized with the character, and speaks to an audience um, in terms of uh, being entertaining and being accessible. So it's, it's, it's not about being able to do skills with, with the baton in this event. So I just wanted to make sure that that was really understood 
um, you know, before we before we go on. Uh, like I said before, they will, obviously, the higher level of athletes that they are, the coaches will use various modes of twirling in very visual and creative ways that will enhance their design qualities. And you'll see those in some of the performance examples later on. But twirl less, move more, and be perfect is the motto of the event overall. And the baton absolutely is probably the last of the elements that you will want to address when uh, either doing or judging or looking you know, at uh, an artistic event. The body, let's talk about the body. We're gonna talk in terms of body vocabulary. Uh, body vocabulary is all of the moves that the choreographer will use to enhance the musicality, enhance the characterization, will uh, be uh, will use in terms of the variety of the bodies and how the bodies are worked in the form and the transitions of the form in order to create a fullness and to create excitement, in order to create effect, in order to create a musically interpretive uh, moment. So the body is basically choreography. And either if you want to say dance, okay, dance work, or if you want to uh, coordinate that with the movement, because that involves the body as well. So there's constant movement. There's constant detailing of the bodies while they're all moving together, and they're working together as one. That's just the general um, viewpoint of the body. The next design, this is the toughie. This is, this is really difficult usually for the, the uh, coaches and choreographers because this is the, the uh, one element that is crucial and will determine the success or failure of a program. And this is the design. And this is the, the actual blueprint the writing of the uh, the program, how seamless those forms are, you all know that it's very difficult, even with eight kids or five or six in a team, to get them to move around the floor and to try to figure out how they can do that without running into each other. Okay, you multiply that times two or three with a, a, an artistic group. Now we have we actually have forms. We have transitions, and when I say forms, I mean the, the actual shape of the formation that is, that is uh, used, and it's only there for a minimum amount of time before it transitions. So that form then needs to actually move, and it needs to change shape and create another form. That's easy to go, that's easy to say, but to actually do that, as a lot of you coaches know, it takes hours and hours, hours to maybe create 16 counts of, of uh, form development. So it's a very, very important aspect of this, um, of this show. So you have to remember that the design and the choreography is the blueprint and it's, 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 exa it's the, uh, the path that these uh, athletes are going to follow in order to be musically interpretive to tell a story, to deliver their character, and so forth. And last, lastly, the most important thing is kind of the, the sum of the whole equation here, and that is general effect. Did it work? Is it, is it entertaining? Did they bring it to life? Um, is it, uh, was there really clever things done visually? Was it interesting? Did it engage you? Did the audience react? Did they react to something along the way, or was it boring? So th those are those are the elements that you have to ask yourself when when uh, speaking and referring to general effect, and and that is the communication. It's basically how those performers were able to deliver the goods, deliver their their work, and make it effective and make it really meaningful. Um, as performers, did you believe them as characters? Did you believe their story? Were you engaged? Did it move you to some to some degree, or were you just watching them out there running around uh, among themselves uh, aimlessly? So those these are some of the some of the uh, the key points of general effects that I think that uh, is the most important thing. Obviously, you want to make sure that at the end of the day, it's got to be effective. 
Did it work? It's worth 40 points on the score sheet. And of course, general effects can only really truly work if it's within a good design quality and has and embedded within a good sense of architecture that can, uh, that can really generate and can be conducive to producing that effect. Then stepping back down one more level to the, to the, uh, the movement, was there choreography in, did the bodies move in that architecture of design and did that architecture of the design with those bodies moving create the, the event? And then last but not least, well, last but yes, least, is the baton. Did the baton complement, did that inanimate object become a third dimension of that body, of that choreography, of the body vocabulary? Was it embedded correctly and logically within the design in order to work to make the general effect all come together and um, be an entertaining product? So as you can see, even though all of these elements from a coach's or a designer standpoint, they're all interlaced. The judges, however, will only judge each caption solely, only. So it's very, very important that, that um, if, you're, if you're looking at this and if you're hearing this as a judge, that you have a lens with simply only the ingredients of that caption and not the other captions because uh, then at the end of the day, you let the system work, it totals up to 100, and that's how the rankings are determined. So that gives you a kind of overview of the captions and how those captions um, work together. Now, I think it's kind, of, it's kind of important now that we look at the performance examples. Um, what, we're very lucky right now because we have now had a uh, competition last uh, IC in Croatia that was that was very well attended by a lot of artistic groups. So we have artistic groups now to use as performance examples. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you some examples of just general. Now when I'm showing you this first example, we're only, we're only going to watch just a minute or two of each of the ones just to give you an idea as to what these uh, performances look like in terms of range. Do keep in mind that the overall range, for instance, on the first one, it's, it's a fair range. They may be fair in one category. They may be in a, something in a different cat in another caption. It's just a general, a general assessment of fair overall. So it doesn't mean that the judges will look to this group and compare to them because there'll be no other group like this ever in the fair range, okay, or any other range. This is simply an example of the qualities that you're gonna see in the fair range. So we'll begin and we'll watch about a minute and a half or a minute and 45 seconds of this first artistic group. It's a little bit stuck right there. You can see that there is characterization based off of just the way they look. You can see even in this stop action here that there's a lot of variation in how they move in the lower part of the body. There's a lack of overall precision, very typical for fair range athletes and fair range performers within this. They do have an awareness of spatial awareness on the floor. It's very symmetrical from the center court line, which is great for fair level athletes to conform to, knowing that they're gonna be the same on either side of, of the line. And Dale, I'm just going to jump in here and remind yeah. everyone that these performance examples are available on Knowledge Central. Just go to education.ustwirling.com and find the post that was just recently um, published um, with the instructions on how to access um, the learning and education materials. 
is it running fluidly for you? On my computer, it just happens to be choppy, it's, very choppy. It's not. Webinars are not really meant to, okay. you know, show videos. Okay. So, so reiterating the fair range here, um, you can see that it's very symmetrical. It's very simplistic in its design. They are in shapes. You can identify a shape. There's very little uh, actual body vocabulary that's used, but the body, body vocabulary that is used is very uh, uh, repetitious, which is very typical for fair range and appropriate. This is a very successful fair artistic group. Okay, Monica, we can move on to the next one if we could. I'm looking for the beginning. Sorry. Oh. The next group is is just a good example of what an average artistic group would look like. Obviously, we're looking at the next level up because of maturity of movement. There's a, there's a bit more of a contrast and a bit more of an interest in forms that are created in contrast, the linear, the circular, and just the development of, uh, of those, those two shapes then building into the wedge. Now we have the windows that are, that are offered here with the three lines. The constant movement, as you can see, they're rarely in a form more than eight counts, probably less than that. That's a good thing. This keeps your interest. It's very kaleidoscopic, how forms will then shape and transition to another form. And you notice that as the primary focus as opposed to the baton. With their body work, their body work is a little bit less priority. Uh, probably their body would be in a lower range because there's not a lot of body vocabulary that is used in order to define or to describe what it is that they're trying to describe to you. Um, here they're trying to, it's dark and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, has a very serious, you know, type of a, of a communication in terms of characterization. That's being, uh, you know, portrayed simply by the tension and their bound qualities of the, of the choreography. Okay, we can go on to the next one. When you watch this in your own home, you can see that they all obviously have some visual effects that are created as well that helps to create um, the ge overall general effects. This group is very characterized. They utilize uh, Chim Chim uh, Tree. They're also very um, characterized with their bodies. All of the details with the choreography, in other words, their body vocabulary spoke to the character. So if you were watching this without music, you can actually get a sense of what their stylistic approach is. You can get a sense of what musicality um, is being portrayed here. Plus, they're very theatrical with the use of the soloist and the uh, central character in the, in the center. And they're actually telling a story in, in their development as well. The baton work, again, doesn't necessarily stand out as being dominant. That is obviously a good thing. You're going to notice form. You're going to notice character. You're going to notice musicality. You're going to notice the quirkiness of the body vocabulary. First and foremost, the baton, you're going to notice probably the last, the last thing. Can they twirl? Obviously, they can twirl, but this is an example of a good range uh, artistic group that has all of the right ingredients in terms of, of uh, portraying a visual concept of the artistic group. Okay, and we can go on to the next group now. I will say that uh, in, uh, it was determined by the committee that um, we didn't have, this is another example of a, of a good, which is a high good. Um, you can see right off the bat here that costuming obviously is 
an integral part of how they chose to create the effect. They're using the song Volare, and they're, it's a very lyrical form. So it, it's not character-based necessarily, but they're identifying their fluidity and the, uh, their lyricism with the fluidity of the music and obviously creating shape and creating transitions, obviously, along the way. You can obviously, it's very picturesque how they build from one moment in, into another. You can see that the baton is actually a third dimension of their body here. They're utilizing vertical, a 45 uh, placement, but it's still prioritizing body vocabulary and certainly beyond that, prioritizing form, transition of form, which then all those things collectively create the musicality. Also, too, with this group, you can see there's a, a, a greater sense, certainly, of maturity of movement and a fluidity of movement as well. That's certainly stem, uh, is, uh, is as a result and stems from their technical training in terms of body and also baton, because their baton is used very effortlessly. I never get the sense at this level that they are focusing on the baton more so than their body. It's simply a third dimension to the body. They're dancing with the baton. It's a part of their body. It's almost like a third limb. So I just wanted to, to emphasize that. Here again, you're going to see a lot, a lot more variety. There's a little bit less symmetry that is used in the higher levels. In other words, it's more, more complex if symmetry is not used based off of the center court line, obviously. Um, there's a lot more interest, there's a lot more shape, and there's just a lot more utilization. Here we have negative space. Negative space is when nothing is there except for this soloist in the center. That's on purpose, and that certainly adds to the variety of the design and the complexity of the design as well. When that is embedded within the written part of the, of the design, then obviously there's more potential for uh, creation of general effect moments to be created um, and, and projected. And here they, they use symmetry, but watch what they do with the symmetry here. They're going to utilize uh, the, their bodies on the floor in very angular ways that's going to create a very creative visual effect. But again, you're not reacting to anything that they do specifically with any modes of twirling at all. Most of these teams will do a two-turn because that's the limit of what they can do because we use the B level content restrictions. They'll do that, but some teams will, some groups will do it in a very effective way. Some groups will just throw it in there just because they feel like that they need to. This is another example of uh, a, a good group. Interestingly enough, they've chosen to use a lot of floor work and a little bit less less uh, movement of, of form. So therefore, their priority is going to be a little bit different. You're going to, you're going to react to them a little bit differently than you would to the, other, to the other team. There's no right or wrong with any of these. All of these groups that I'm showing you is all okay. Remember, any approach or any stylistic approach certainly can be successful. Here you can see that they've created a line and very similar to what we know as uh, either drill team or dance team. They're creating these visual effects on the right there as they uh, split the, the, uh, the, the center court line and it creates a moment. So you're interested, you're, it's, it's cool, it looks really different, it's very musically motivated and uh, it, it creates an event. That's a general effect moment. Again, they go back into the ground one more time, you know, sacrificing their movement and their motion a little bit more for the emphasis of the vocabulary of body and now with batons uh, slightly. It's, it's a little bit vacant right here because it's, it's a little repetitive, you know, um, in that regard. Just some slight variation, you know, with their lower part of the body in transition as they go from shape to shape, and that's what kind of keeps them out of higher levels. Okay, now we can go into the next, um, the next groups. We've determined the committee, as I was getting ready to say before, has determined that there really wasn't a really good, good example of an excellent range of, uh, 
of artistic group. However, we did have three superior level uh, artistic groups re represented uh, last year, which were fantastic. And this, as you can see, this, they're choosing, these are dancers, and they're choosing to show you the broadest range of dance and body vocabulary probably possible. And, but they're not sacrificing form, they're not sacrificing design quality, staging, or events, or effects either. And there is baton enhancement along the way. But as you can see, you, you find yourself really interested in the vocabulary of the body. And that's clearly projected because of the forms that they're staged in, which was really a great choice. These performers are very skilled when it comes to dance quality. They have uh, certainly that under their belt, and they really brought it. So with this music and with this, uh, uh, this style of presentation, you know, you really can appreciate that, that quality. Uh, the other thing that, that's notable here is at this superior level, the use of velocity is very, very important because their use of velocity created a higher risk and did not sacrifice from their precision, if you'll see. So it's, it's a, you know, something done a lot faster, obviously, is a lot more risk, you know, for a, a greater uh, sense of uniformity. But this group is probably, probably, uh, they could put the batons down and do any kind of a dance production and be highly successful with it. It's staged in such a way that you're interested in their relationship um, among them in terms of form. They're working together as one. You don't notice that there's a star necessarily in the group. Uh, the way that we see many of the groups, there are maybe feature moments, but those two people that are being featured now could be uh, in, in a form and not featured later on, and others would be. I get the sense that anybody could be, be featured in this group, only because of the quality of their uh, body vocabulary. So therefore, they had something to say to you in terms of their personality projection, the velocity of the dance, how the dance spoke through the music, and, uh, and then how effective it totally was from the beginning. You get a sense that you're not watching a baton contest at this point. And if you get that sense, then it's probably in the superior range when they're that, that good. Okay, we can go into the next one. I think that that was probably there near the end, I believe. So that's one style of presentation. This is another style of presentation. This, uh, this was a crowd favorite, by the way. Uh, a lot of kids on the floor, they did hip hop. They had, you know, ball caps on. They were, they were uh, very committed in terms of their body isolation. You know, they made you respect the fact that a bunch of kids could be professional with delivering hip hop and having a great time doing it. And they were very, very convincing. Interestingly enough, again, you look at the back group, you look at the groups on the side, you look at the group in the front, you get a sense that they're all working together as one and there's 100% total commitment to the stylistic approach being the coach's responsibility was to make sure that this venue and that this approach was going to be compatible to all of those members out on the floor. So it didn't really matter who ended up in the front, who ended up in the back, the way we typically have to re arrange teams based on the quality and the strengths and weaknesses of, of our members. You get a sense that because the vocabulary and uh, the, the vocabulary of the body and the, the baton is actually very uh, consistent that it doesn't matter who's in the front or who's in the back. It's all going to look as one. This is what generates and creates precision and perfection. So this is, uh, this is very, very important. And as you can see, they're high energy, you know, they're in character, the costuming, the music, 
their forms. They had elements of surprise. Sometimes what they did in a, um, in a, in a rather uh, slow or contrasting uh, sense of velocity really brought the house down just because of the, the effect. You know, I think that there, there was one of those moments coming up here where you'll, where you'll see, you know, hip hop, you think that it's very fast and furious and, and ongoing in terms of, of speed, but they, they did do a great job in contrasting that too. That gave the audience time to really react to them and it's exactly what they wanted. The audience reaction to them would create absolutely perfect general effect because the audience reacted to them so frequently throughout the performance. Look at that. All they're, all they're doing was literally a laying down and the audience went crazy. But because of the staging, because of the timing, because of the precision, because of the musicality of it, it gave the audience time to just go crazy for them during that one moment. That's a planned event which contributed to the pacing of their program in a very, very positive way. Again, the compression of, of, uh, of form, you know, how they expand their form and condense their form is fantastic. I think this, uh, this vision here, you're going you're gonna to see even a little bit more of how they move from place to place. Here, it's a little bit free form. Watch how they're compressing. They're compressing the form and boom, it ends up being a circle obviously, and then they go into the layback. Then they go back into the eye. You can see the shape of the eyeball. It's right there. That was reflective of the music at that particular uh, point. Then we're going into the files, back into windows. Look at the transitions and the clarity and the cleanliness of going from files to windows back to files again. And then separating into the various pods around, around the floor. That just doesn't happen. That their individual awareness of each other is such a team skill that's so well learned that they were able to use that within their architecture of their design. And it, uh, it was, it was uh, truly fabulous. Then they opened up the stage. They put everybody else in the lower plane to feature that one performer coming across there. Very smart. If they were all standing up doing that, you wouldn't have gotten that same effect. They all went to the ground like this and featured the ones that are standing up. That brought a heightened level of those features you know, to you so that it, it shortened the distance of them being the performance to you, the performer. That's a design skill, that's a design motif that is very, very important and something that we all need to learn from. Here again, we're going back into you know, the diagonal. Doing a diagonal, as most of you know, twirling or performing any time on the diagonal is very, very difficult because we tend to want to stay within the four sides of a room, you know, in terms of being on pattern, quote unquote. Here, they were not doing that. So that was another skill that was very, very subtle, but yet quite impactful and contributed to the design and the variety of the design. You never forgot the fact that they knew who they were that they were absolutely in character the entire time and solidly, solidly, solidly displaying and delivering that characterization to you. And that stemmed simply because they were so well aware and so, so attentive to their own responsibility to the design that they were able to then concentrate on the characterization and to create the general effect. Going back into this motif right here, it's a very communal type of a atmosphere that they create with these circular patterns, you know, because kids at that level, you know, they like to twirl really close together, close to their friends, you know, they generate energy. The closer you get, the more compressed the form, the more energy that the potential is and, and the more powerful and impactful it can be. The more spread out, the more air, the more space, the more interval that you have in these forms, the more exposure to error do you have and the less impactful it is to the, to the audience. And there they were there. Okay. This is another approach. This is the, the Genesis team. Many of you know this team from, um, this is Seishi Inagaki's team. He is the one who has choreographed 
the world champion teams for the last several years. Obviously, this is a uh, take, um, not a take on the team, but this is a uh, group effect, a group approach to how he trains his athletes. This is very sophisticated. It's very uh, almost non-form oriented, bringing more emphasis then to what? To the uh, body uh, detailing and to the baton detailing as well. You're going to notice that more than you would a form because that last form, you couldn't really identify it because it was free form. So therefore, you're going to notice something else as a priority. That was the design choice. Here, you're going to notice form. You're going to notice choreography. You're going to notice the relationship between the male and the female. This was kind of a tango, sensuous type of, a, of an approach that they had. And it was, it was, a, constant, it was a, a constant question and answer between the male and the female. Uh, here again, another type of a motif, you know, where the males are together and the females are responding. Some other times that the females are going to be questioning and the, the, the males are going to respond. So it's this type of an approach that was delivered in a very, um, a little bit less than form orientation. If it were constant in form orientation, uh, such as the previous team would have done, if they would have done that with this approach, I think the characterization would not have come through as strongly as it did. It would have felt generic and cold. This, um, you know, this was a, a perfect approach for this style of presentation. They bring the line, the girls downstage, they get really close to you because the girls have such a great upper body expression. They look very, very Latin and they have that, that very sassy, uh, sensuous look about them. That was obviously just simply a look that they wanted to give you that created the event and created the moment. Their constant interaction, as they interact um, uh, internally, you, you also get a, a, a sense that it's then communicated outward to the audience. But first and foremost, they're communicating internally among themselves. And then we are sort of bystanders to that. And then because of the design and how it's, how it's arranged, we get the message that then is communicated to us and we're involved in that communication. This probably is the highest level of design sophistication that can, that can be done. When you first work inter internally, then work externally, and the audience can really sense that. So as you can see, just by these examples, that the design, the coaches, the designers, the choreographer, and uh, the, the stagers, it's their, it's their responsibility. It's 70% of the entire show is, re, is on the shoulders of the designers. Okay, so that gives you a pretty broad range from the fair all the way to the superior level. Now, hopefully, and obviously, we are going to be updating these every single year because None of these people will come back with that same kind of program. They're going to come back with new elements and new approaches to creativity, and this is the and and new forms of entertainment. So this is exactly exactly what we want. Again, these are only examples to give us an idea of what this event is all about, where we are with it at this point in time, and um, just to, just so that we know what the priorities of them are. As you can see, the sense of musicality is a little bit different. The sense of, of, uh, of effect is a little bit different. When you react to them as performers, you're reacting to them in a broader range than you are simply in, uh, as opposed to being skilled baton twirlers, which is, uh, is not the priority of, of your reaction probably. Okay, um, I do wanna, I do wanna to, cl to close, before we go to questions, I do want to say a few things about this group event. Um, and these are the truths about this event. And I think this kind of sums up where we are um, and where we want to go, you know, with the event. 
Any style approach can be successful. Coaches, designers are totally free to create any form of work that is entertaining and reflective of the artistic group event. You can do anything you want. It's totally free. And all of the judges are going to be accepting of that freedom. Two, artistic group is not direct, is not a direct uh, der uh, derivation of team. It is its own event. 70% relies on the creativity and, of the coaches and the designers. Artistic group is not about, look what I can do from the athletes. Virtuosity is not a focus. Big tricks are not a big, a big deal. They are almost a distraction if they're not used properly and used within the enhancement of the design and characterization in the musicality, or else it becomes token, and that is a negative. Number five, the mindset must be changed from team on everybody's part. Number six, the baton is the third dimensional prop that is used to enhance the whole. High level tricks as we know them has virtually very little value in this event and the program could somewhat stand alone without the baton. Remember, baton is only 15% of the consideration. Okay, number seven. Okay, so the priorities or how does a great artistic group even happen? Okay, number one. The coaches, designers, the choreographers, they have to come up with a theme, a concept, a story, a character that is selected and that is also compatible and appropriate to the level of athletes that they have. What is the purpose of the program? What do you wish to say to your audience? This has to be on the minds of all designers, every single count, every single practice. The next one, music may inspire the previous and certainly motivate the roadmap of the program. A beginning, a middle, and an end with a dynamic range of audible impacts that will speak to an audience. Great designs are inspired by the arts. Delve into theater, film, dance, music, any other forms of performance art. We, are, we respond to performance art because of our artistic uh, diversity especially in this country. So delve into those, borrow from them, be inspired, be motivated, you know, by those venues. And here's the hard part. It's the design. The design will, will be, will encompass forms, transitions, will have new forms, have staged and paced impactful events that will evoke a reaction from your audience. Move, move, move. Stationary sets are boring and rather inappropriate for this event. Drill design techniques, theatrical entrances, exits, choreography movement, and all concepts that will be crucial will be successful. So coaches really have to spend some time really thinking about that visual effect. And you have to do that from the perspective of your audience and your judges. If you're doing it in a multi-purpose room in, in an elementary school and you're eye to eye with your performers, you're going to be at a really strong disadvantage in creating these visual effects that we've been talking about. At some point, you're going to have to get up and look down upon your creation and see if it's working. Next, the detailing of the body and the baton vocabulary are the designs, adjectives that enhance and bring a personality to the design. Body and baton are used to co coordinate with the prescribed character, theme, and concept. And then at the end of the day, this is, it, this is what it's all about. Is it effective? It better be since that's the strongest caption. Ask, how many times did the audience react? Did you believe the character? Could you follow the story clearly? Were you amazed by the precision and quality of the overall movement that was perfectly complementary to the music? Did you see cool things that obviously took some thoughtful creativity? That, that last paragraph sums it all up because if it's all designed well, if, it's all, if the kids are trained with, with what you've given them with body and baton and there, it's embedded within, within a great and a thoughtful design architecture and 
those are moments, and it's creative, and it's uh, believable by the character, it's going to be, it's going to be effective. Okay, you just keep asking yourself that as you continue as you uh, continue on. Judges, if you are judging these events, keep in mind that your lens, your focus is simply, simply based on um, the, your caption only. For example, the la one of the groups that we saw was the dance group from, from Japan that I kept saying had the greatest and the broadest range of body vocabulary. That group should have won the caption of body. So it would be totally appropriate as a judge to have them ranked first and the other two that even place above them under them in that particular caption. Remember, as a judge, you're not determining the overall winner. You're not using place points. You're not determining winners here. You're simply evaluating and ranking your caption. Rather that caption be the best of the, best of the group or the worst of the group, you're going to let the system work. So that's your perspective there. Your tunnel vision and your, your sense of uh, focus you know, on the caption only is absolutely crucial in order for the system to work. Coaches and designers, you have to look at it holistically. You got to look at it from not only the caption standpoint, but you got to look at it from uh, how those captions are interlaced. So, yeah, like I said before, it's 70% on your shoulders. So um, that's, that's the responsibility. So anyway, it's, um, we have about 10 minutes before the close of this webinar. I, I hope that I have brought some light to this event and maybe inspired some of you coaches and designers and maybe brought clarity to some of you judges that, that have to judge this as well. So at this point, we, um, Monica, I think that we will entertain some questions. And um, also, if we do not get to your question, please feel free to email me, and I'm, I'm more than happy to answer any question if we don't get to it within the next 10 minutes here. So just to reiterate, um, everybody open up those chat icons to open up your chat windows, and please send us your questions. We haven't had any questions just yet about the artistic group material. Um, so we will, we're eagerly awaiting your questions. I would like to say that too, since Monica does have the forums and the information that was used in, in tonight's webinar, this is something that she could, should absolutely post on Knowledge Central for your, um, uh, purpose for your useful purpose later on too, as well as listening to um, you know the 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 presentation. Yeah. So while we're still waiting for people to um, submit any questions, um, I just want to take a moment to remind everybody where they can access um, where they can access Knowledge Central. You can go to the U.S. Twirling dot com website and you can click here on the left hand sidebar there's a there's a link for knowledge central and the very first article that you'll see is the article pertaining to how to access the educational materials for USTA professional members you can click on that and then there will be instructions on how to uh, how to get there so we do have a question um, from Patty McKenna. She says, how to get to the truth? Oh, and then she says, glad it will be in Knowledge Central. So yes, it's not there yet, Patty. However, I will upload the, these documents once we are done, along with the recording of this webinar so that others who were unfortunately not able to attend this webinar will be able to watch it at a later date and still get the same information and insights. Also too, um, on Knowledge Central, there are other items of interest pertaining to artistic group that are presented throughout. So if you're not familiar with Knowledge Central, 
do become familiar with it because there's a wealth of knowledge on there. Many of, many of the articles and many of the visual presentations pertain to artistic group as well. Also, too, if anybody does need more information regarding caption um, study or overall, I'm happy to share any information or any files or, or PowerPoints that I, that I have. I'm more than willing to give all the information to anybody who would uh, like to have it and request it. So um, we do want to spread the word. We want to make sure that everybody is aware of, of uh, the direction that, that this event is going in. And we want to have everybody excited for it because I think the potential for this event is quite great. And I think that it's great for all levels. I think that, you know, as you know, kids love to twirl with other kids. And what a great opportunity this is um, knowing that you don't have to have all the modes of twirling represented in order to keep kids interested because a lot of kids are very discouraged uh, sometimes by learning all the skills that they need to with other events. This is an event where you can have some fun, you can develop a program, get great uh, performance qualities out of the kids at all levels, and then work work an entire uh, program from that. So it's, uh, it's, has, it has a great deal of potential. But like I said, if anybody needs any further information that I may have even presently or even old information that I have, I'm certainly willing to um, share that with you. And as we mentioned before, the performance examples, AKA role models are on Knowledge Central. If you go to the resources page, the performance examples are public. So from the Knowledge Central website, you can just go up to professional resources, click there. You'll be taken to Knowledge Central uh, uh, training and resources. You can go to performance examples, role models, and scales. And then you can see our USTA performance examples. WBTF performance examples along with the scales and informational documents, and WBTF performance examples for International Cup events. And where we were um, was on the WBTF artistic group link. Click there and you can see the artistic group performance examples that we reviewed today. I highly encourage everyone to really take the time to watch in its entirety that video presentation, which will give you the broad range of going from fair to uh, superior. And when you, when you view that, having heard the information that you heard, I hope that then you can look at things maybe a little differently than what you have before, or if you've already knew this material, it would just enhance or just support the, the material and the, uh, the knowledge that you already have regarding, regarding this event. But um, yeah, I do want to thank you all for um, attending tonight. And um, again, if there's any questions that you might have or any information or help that you needed in any aspect of this, of this event, please feel free to reach out. Again, thank you very, very much for, for attending and have a great, great night.